My bitch is pretty, I know that she with me, I know she a boss yeah, I know she a boss We walk in the mall, we coppin' whatever so what's good, dog? How you feeling? What's up with you, Shorty? How you feeling, dog? Yeah, I'm good. You seem a little nervous, like, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what's going on no, right now. You got anything going on. You got... Yeah, I man, tried. really came a long way. I tried to give you fire and some more shit, you feel me? Yo, Jay was recording with just a phone at one point. <laughs> and now he got three, four, five cameras, got all the lights. And I really couldn't see it, but, like, this is... I told you, you people, doing your thing, yo. you appreciate it, thing, dog. Doing your thing, seriously, seriously. But yo, yeah. I feel like the last time we tried to do this interview, it was weird because we knew we we know each other too well. Yeah. And we were trying to do the interview. It was like, it's just weird interviewing with you, bro. Let's do it another time. Right, right. But like, I feel like you um you definitely came a long way from then. Both of us, right? Like just right. like you said. Um, but for the people that don't know, like, who is morning after? You had the shirts. Who was morning after? But I feel like nobody really got a real introduction of who you are. Who who, who is morning after the artist, the person? The artist or the person, they not the same. Because mm. you can know me as an artist, but you ain't going to know me as a person because I keep a lot of things uh, to myself, as you should. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got everything on social media. That's why Beyonce don't show you her kids. Drake don't show you his kids. I ain't going to show you my kids, which is my money. I ain't going to show you too much of my siblings. I might take a picture of them. I ain't going to show you and tell you too much about them because mm. social media things can get put out a different perspective. You feel me? Right. So, so yeah. who is morning after the artist? Morning after the artist is a learner. Like this whole thing is a learning experience. This R and B stuff is new to me. I feel like everybody want to do R and B. Everybody want to sing. Everybody want to get in the shower and really hit those notes. Yeah, I do. But <laughs> to actually learn it and to pick on that as a trade is different. And I, I would say I'm a learner. I'm getting better. You know, I think I need to take vocal training classes. You said it. My my bros, they say I got to take vocal training classes because I'm really learning. It's not that I'm bad. It's just that. I really didn't know how to sing. And if you really knew me back then, you knew that, yo, we really couldn't sing. But yo got better after a little while. You feel me? Mm, no, nah, that's, that's right. And um, a lot of people do know this, though. Like, you're from Baltimore. Right. And um, just coming from the trenches of Baltimore, man, tell me about the influence that Baltimore had on you just making music, the R&B music, and wanting to be an R&B singer in general. It has a lot of influence, but I wouldn't even say that the R&B. The R&B, I really had to, like, fetch out into, like, what R&B is. You know what I'm saying? We got out culture without Cisco, without Mario, without Drew Hill. Uh, but when it comes to the influence, I'm really influenced by other things that's not R&B. Mm -hmm. I'm influenced by your grind. I'm influenced by Killer, Nacho Bangers. I'm, I'm, I'm influenced by uh, Love the Culture, uh, Chucky. Like, those are just some people that's in the game. I'm really influenced by the hustlers. And I feel like if you could take that and put it into anything, you're going to be successful. And Baltimore really teaches you hustle. If you go anywhere else, People say, yeah, something about Baltimoreans, like, it's not only the accent, but they funny, and they really be on they, they on their shit for real. Right. So I wouldn't even just give it the credit of just R&B, because I think we're, our, uh, who we are in general, in every facet of, of everything, it stick out, you right. feel me? But now, I definitely think Baltimore has a lot of hustlers, right? But when you, when I think of hustler, right, I think of, like, rapper, I think of dope boy selling drugs and things like that. Mm -hmm. What made you... Coming from Baltimore with so many hustlers, what made you want to choose? What made you choose R and B? Hard. It's harder. That's it. It's mm. not even because it's not. It's just when I'm a type of person that I just want to try everything that's harder. Mm. Like I see, I was in a whole rap group before, and I see uh, how easy it is, and I just want to try something that's harder. Like mm. that's it. It's literally a challenge. Something about the challenge is like, yo, I could do that. I could sell drugs, but that's that's too easy. You know what I'm mm. saying? It got to be something that's harder and might even be more better in the long run. Right. And R&B is harder and it is better in the long run because you might got somebody that was uh, uh, a rapper that was relevant when Cisco was around, but Cisco was still around compared to every other rapper. He's played out and everything else, but if Cisco want to come out and be on the back of a, of a, of a Chris Brown song, everyone's going to accept it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But Coolio, you know what I'm saying, that was out back then, they might not accept it being on a Chris Brown song. They're like, yo, who's this old head? You feel me? Right. So I think the things that are more challenging, they they last longer. So I just felt like I want to be in it to win it. I want to last longer. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. So when you yeah. first started, you you didn't even have a voice. You was just like, man, forget it. I just want to be an R&B singer. Yeah, yo, I didn't have a voice. I literally didn't have a voice. I just had, I had, uh, uh, I ain't going to lie. I had the the mindset. I had the same thing that anybody else who would have on all the team. I had the shower voice. You feel mm. what I mean? Everybody got a shower voice. I mean, but, maybe not everybody, because I be trying to sing, but I, 
I'm just not really good at it. <laughs> no, nah, you can teach yourself. It's hard though. Like if I was to give it a time frame, I say five years. Five years, you're gonna have something. You're gonna have a Drake effect. Mm -hmm. And Drake, everybody said Drake couldn't sing back then, but over time, Drake got better as a singer. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, I think I think you could definitely get better over time. Like I had to teach myself. So you said more than after the artist is a learner, just steady yeah, progressing, right? Yeah, learn. I can't even give myself like, oh, I'm the greatest R&B and this stuff, stuff like that. I want the world to give it to me, but even when the Grammys come and all that, I'm gonna just say, bro, I'm always a student of the game. You feel me? You feel what I'm saying? You you talking about uh, morning after as the artist, you say you're a learner, like you study progressing, and then there's so many artists, so many people in Baltimore that's just hustling in general, right? So right. it make you wanna like hustle harder. And I feel like it kinda answered my own question. Like I wanted to talk to you, talk to you about what made you finally say, forget it, I'm gonna just up and move to the A. Bro, it's like you got Maryland, which is known for got the government sector, you got people who, I wouldn't say so much retire here, but uh, you got government money here. So you got people who make a, 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 good, a, good, a good salary here and stuff like that. But going to, to Atlanta, it's just it's like different. you got <laughs> drug dealers, you got the scammers, you got the people who make money legally, and it's so many black people that's doing it. Mm. So it's like, why not put myself around a whole bunch of black successful people um, who doing it at different ratios. For real, for real, I say Maryland is like, it's like a mining city, you know what I'm saying? Because we next to D.C., um, so we talking about government contractors. If you go to a place like, I don't know, I'm going to just throw this out there, I'm going to say like Oklahoma, they might be known for mining. So mining is like a good job, you feel mm -hmm. me? Here, a good job is, you know, the, a government worker, so like that. It's the same mentality, you feel me? But I ain't see that in Atlanta. I don't really see a craft where people make money. I see so much pools of money. Right. They're just like, yo, just get it. Get it. So, but, but going down there, it just, it put me around people who, who get into it, who really making money off of it, who selling, selling beats for 10000 selling hooks for 5000 So I'm like, bro, they making money off of this, and I'm doing this at an accelerated rate in the trenches. I'm, I'm singing for Migos, opening up for them. I can go down there and just, do that same type of mentality, and who knows where it can get me. Mm. So it's just it's just a leap of faith, bro. That's what it, what it is. Yo, you know, it's crazy, man. Um, I feel like when we tie to something, a yeah. lot of times we want closure. And, you know, a part of getting closure is feeling like we accomplished something. Do you feel like you accomplished everything you need to accomplish in Baltimore? Nah, nah, nah. I feel like when you are a, a, a perfectionist as I am, it's, it might be a Virgo, a Virgo with me. Like, <laughs> once you're a perfectionist as I am, You'll say no, you see what I'm saying? You say like, yo, I still need these features to hook up. I need to do this and that. But in all actuality, you know what I'm saying? There's no real, no, no blueprint. You don't even know your blueprint. Only God knows your blueprint. I'm real religious, so only God knows your blueprint. So I uh, was like, hey, it's a lot of things I still could be doing. Mm. But ain't nothing should, why can't I do both? You feel right. what I'm saying? Why can't I do both? Why can't I still come back, still build those relationships and be there? You know what I'm saying? I, already, I did the majority, I did the legwork. You know what I'm saying? You, my name ring bells to a certain extent in Baltimore so I can I can maneuver how I want to maneuver here right let me do that in the actual in the in the place where it's the music industry right? so where, which is where Atlanta is for real facts and you know they say like you know um I think Boosie talked about this a lot like basically just you have to leave your hometown to really yeah. get love from your hometown like they're not really going to love you until you go away do you feel like you going away give you more respect in your home city oh yeah yeah people take you serious because it's just like oh you do music Nah, it's not, oh, you do music. It's, oh, congratulations on your move. How's everything going? They still might not follow you, but they know that you're out of here. Mm. They know that they ain't expecting you to get married and have a kid and settle down and get a house. They honestly expect you to do exactly what you've been saying that you was doing, but since they so focused on their life, they ain't never really focused on yours. So I have seen people uh, just take me a little bit more serious. And they're like, yo, next time you come back to the city. So, yeah. Yeah. Fact. So how how was the transition? Like, did you find it easier to do features with artists out there? Like, what are you doing out there that you wasn't doing in the city? Or what are you doing out there that you was doing in the city of Baltimore? Like, All right, so how was the transition? I'm going to say for everybody that's watching, when you're in your city and your city really ain't moving, you got to go to everything that's, that's, that's popping. Here, you got Shoe City and Downtown Locker Room. Mm -hmm. Those are just two clothing brands for everybody that's watching that was popping in the city. And you got 92Q, which is... 92.3, you know what I'm saying? These are the most three poppinest things in the city, if poppinest is a word. But <laughs> Most popping, whatever. Right, yeah, <laughs> so I went to all three of those, anything that they would throw, and I just go to them, I make space, you know what I'm saying? So when Nipsey Hussle came, I came and I just was like, what's going on, Nipsey Hussle, this and that, just introduced myself. I did that then and there for everybody. Mm. So if I do that, but I do that in Atlanta, you got, you got these three things, right? But instead of these three things, you got 
500 of them, literally. Yeah. So I'm just hitting those up, and I might meet Amigos. I might meet a K-Camp. I might meet uh These uh, are some of the people you met, though. Yeah. Already? Yeah, yeah I, met, I already met all of them. I met Zaytoven. Wild Band in Atlanta. Yeah, uh, Sunny Digital, uh, uh, YF and Lucci. Like, these are people that I'm in the same vicinity. I'm in the studio, and they're just like, dang. If I was in Baltimore going to an event that was around the corner, you know what I'm saying, around the corner from Buckhead, you know, around the corner from East Baltimore, it's just two different, two different vibes. Like I'm gonna stumble upon uh, a connection off of me living here. So right. I was like, why not dip and do that? You feel me? So I guess having that mentality, that mindset made the transition like easier because you already was doing that in Baltimore. So I was like, you ain't really doing anything different. In the yeah. Head. Yo, I wanted to talk about, um, you know, like we friends, like brothers for real. And like the one thing that I love about you is you're so talented, right? But you're multi-talented. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're multi-faceted, you do so many things. You mix your own music, you make your own beats, you record your own songs, write your own songs, you write for other people. You know, like what made you want to be so hands-on in making your music? Uh, just getting myself to believe in myself and getting that quality. It's just like, you don't want to put your hands, you know, put anybody else's hands uh, in your future, like you ain't gonna hire a whole set of people, especially you wanna you wanna put out something at a fast pace. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You wanna get on TV, you wanna have uh, a big following. So it's just I just wanted to get hands on because I I wasn't getting it. That's one thing. And and then Baltimore, you know, like a, like a lot of other small cities, probably doesn't have the top sound. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I said I want the top sound. I want this and that. I'm not competing with nobody, but the only people I'm listening to is the famous people. And we ain't got nobody famous in our city, so it's just like we ain't got that production, ain't got that sound. Let me just go ahead and, um, and, and, and put my best foot forward. But you know, another thing too is that they say that you ain't really gonna get the help that you need until you really start, you know, nobody wants to help somebody that's not helping themselves. Okay. So that's what I put in my head. So I always got that about myself. One thing you know about me, I don't expect nobody to give me something that I can't give myself. I ain't expect you to give me money that I, I never gave myself, put money to the side, uh, do anything. That's just like my morals I live by. So. When it came to doing music and, and writing for myself, reducing it, just like, I can't expect for you to write for me if I don't even know how to write for myself or even want to get that urge. So honestly, when you start to do stuff by yourself, you get other people that want to do stuff for you. Mm. You start producing yourself. Now you got camera guys saying, yo, I'm a camera guy. Can I, enter, can I intern for you? You know, you're a producer. Oh, you're a producer. Let's, like, can I produce for you? So, Dang, yeah. so you, you don't find it hard to doing stuff on your own? You know what I'm saying? Like, like I guess other producers and studios, I guess they will have a better ear because they've been doing it long enough. Like yeah. you don't have, you don't find it difficult to do everything by yourself at all. Like it just, it comes easy, always, I guess, after time, after a while. I ain't gonna say it comes easy. It's always difficult because you're always gonna be a perfectionist. But uh, I think over time you you get it. And um, yeah, bro, you just get it after time. But having your hand in so many pots, right? And doing so many things, do you think it, uh, it takes away from the creativity of you making music and just focus on making the music? You got You got a time box things. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, what Drake said, I'm in album mode. Mm. Before that, he was in album mode, he was on tour mode. He probably was making merch, probably was getting his OVOs. You know what I'm saying? He probably had different modes. And what he say, uh, in that new song that he got, he said, summer, all I did was rest. Uh, okay, yeah. New Year's, yeah. all I did was flex. Okay, Valentine's, Valentine's Day, I, I had sex. sex. Okay, we we'll see what's okay. gonna happen next. Yeah, <laughs> so it's just like, he really prioritized his time. You know, whether he says it's uh, October's very right own, where he, like, he's, literally delegating uh, a certain time of the year to putting out music and everything mm -hmm. else is like, I'm gonna throw this here, throw this out. Right. So when it comes to mixing, I'd be like, yo, I might uh, record a whole bunch of songs and when I'm mixing, I ain't recording nothing. I'm just mixing and that's what I'm doing for the day. So it is more difficult um, because if I wasn't, I'd just be able to record a song, get it put out and it could, it could drop. But so it's it just like take, it takes more time because like you gotta compart yeah. Yeah, compartmentalize, right? It's like you gotta yeah. focus on making a beat. If I'm making a beat, I can't focus on making music. Yeah. I just gotta make the beat, right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. then I'm not, I'm not gonna say, like I said, I'm a learner at everything. So I'm the best morning after that is right now, but I'm not, I'm not gonna say, I'm, I ain't gonna ever say I'm probably the best. I'm gonna just say I'm the best morning after at every time. And if you call me the best at R&B, you call me the best at R&B. I still got some growing to do, some things that I want, you know what I'm saying? I might make a hit and it might be fire and the world might like it at that point in time, but I'ma still say, yo, I, I gotta, it's something else I can learn, you right. know what I mean? Yo, question, what happened to um, Morning Mondays? You used morning to do, Mondays. yeah, what happened to that? Nah, it was a change of plan as far as like, all right, I wanna be continuous, but I still wanna make an impact. And I felt like when I was just dropping the uh, Morning Mondays, and for y'all that don't know, Morning Mondays, every Monday I drop a cover and, uh, 
Some would do numbers, some wouldn't. And on SoundCloud, it would just give me numbers. But that's before Instagram decided this dumbass shit where they gonna mess up your algorithm and only certain people gonna see your stuff, you know. So uh, it started getting lower views. It's not even about the views. It was just like it wasn't picking up the traction. And the algorithm was just fucking up everything. So I said, you know what? Not only that, I'm a, uh, I ain't going to put that to the side. But when I do something, I want to do it the right way. Mm. So I don't want to get taken, taken as, yo, I seen that cover you did. But I'm like, what about the original music I did? Because that's what I'm trying to promote. Right. So, so question, do you think that uh, artists doing covers on a weekly basis or just on a regular basis, you think that helps their career or hurt their career since you've been doing it? It depends on how, how your fans picking it up. Because mm. you might got... Uh, I think Russ he dropped a song every every week Damn. for a whole year, and that's how he that's how he went ahead and blew up. But that that method probably won't work for everybody. Mm. After a while, people will say you got the same flow. Look at the baby, he did that. You know what I'm saying? He didn't put out once every week, but he puts something every yeah, once every, every, every month. And everybody started to criticize the baby, and the baby is bigger than Russ. And as far as like the world knowing his brand, and I ain't gonna say I don't know, but I just know the culture really fucked with the baby over fucking with Russ for real and I fuck with Russ but right. uh, it's just you gotta see what your fans is, is you gotta get what's you you feel me that's why I say I can never say I'm the best the, the baby is the best the baby the Russ is the best the Russ and I'm the best morning after yo how do you feel like um, cause you, you dropped a couple singles you know the Plugs Daughter mm -hmm. a few other ones man how do you feel like the people are taking your music now man I feel like I'm getting the ears that I want I'm getting the eyes that I want and uh I'm also still finding myself. I'm still being creative. And I think it's building a different, it's building a different morning. Like, mm. I don't really think none of this is a mistake. I think it's building a, a better morning. So the Plug's Daughter, it took a piece of creativity. I had to direct it, I had to do everything else. Um, so I, I think it's doing what it got, what it got to do for real. That makes sense. What can, uh, what can the people expect next, man? What, what you got coming up? Features. I got features. I want to collaborate with y'all. I want to collaborate with y'all. Like, I'm always a big advocate for R&B working with hip hop. So I really want to work with some rappers. Um, some rappers that's really out here grinding. Not no rappers that's like, yo, I'm gonna put out a tape next year. A person that's grinding. They trying to either run their label, get on with a label, and be on the same type of tip I am. Cause I'm. Mm -hmm. I feel like R&B always had that relationship with hip hop and R&B. So I, you gonna see some collaborations with me, and that might make me pop. That might make me like. You know what I'm saying? Just fit into a different category, but I just like that relationship. So that's what y'all expect to see from me. I already dropping projects. You're going to see more visuals, but you're going to see collaboration and more than after on this hook, more than after on that song. Or, well, you know, so that's what y'all should expect from a kid. Well, no, nah, man, I appreciate the sit down, my guy. Uh, just let people know where they can follow you at and everything, man. Huh? It's your boy, Morning After. And you rocking with me, you rocking with Jay Hill. You can follow me at Morning After on everything. So that's M O R N I A. Uh, AFTA. That's M O M O R N I N A F T A. M O R N I N A F T A. That's on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. And um, straight from Baltimore. And I'm just gonna give y'all R&B. I'm gonna be real today. I die here. Already. I appreciate it again, dog. Thank Always you. a pleasure.